Hi there, friends. It's late on a Tuesday night, and I'm not ready for prime time at all, but I wanted to say hello, and um, I'm really excited about reviewing this news article in Science Magazine. It's a news article about a research article about climate change. Now I'm going to switch to a more attractive image. I've been reading science for many years. I learned how to read basic research articles when I was working in Richard Scheller's laboratory at Stanford. I was a member of the journal club where we had to review in depth research papers. My laboratory probably had 25 postdocs working in it and a number of other researchers as well. So I had to review articles for a large audience of people who knew a lot more than I did and of course listen to their reviews of articles as well. So I'm going to share some of that knowledge with you. Before we go into this article, which I will review tomorrow, it can be really useful if science has had one of their researchers, in this case Kathleen O'Grady, has written a news article that talks about the research article we'll review tomorrow. Just a small rise in Earth's temperature could cause irreversible ecosystem and weather changes. Scientists call for forecasting teams to join forces and improve estimates of tipping points. Nifty looking graphic, but it's colorized. So the, the icebergs in the foreground are colored blue to emphasize cold. The background of the water and the land has an amber warm tone to emphasize warming. I don't like the colorization because it's fake and it just doesn't le lend credence to the rest of the article. Also, it doesn't look to me like these are actual icebergs. There's just something wrong about how the bases are, are floating on the water. But be that as it may. So this news article is going to summarize the research article and also um, calls upon scientists who were not involved in the research article to offer their views to us as an educated outside point of view. This is great prep for diving into the actual article. It's always a lot harder to read. From melting ice sheets to stressed coral reefs, global warming is changing our world in unmistakable ways. Starts out strong with actual facts, but identifying tipping points has been more difficult and more controversial. I believe that it's been controversial to identify tipping points, and that is the difficulty, not the actual research, just the controversial nature. Some researchers argue that emphasizing looming but uncertain tipping points could feed public apathy. This is really important. This is repeated a lot in research. We're going to make the public feel like they can't do anything. This is a very unscientific viewpoint that you shouldn't accurately, you should not accurately convey the results of your research because if it's too terrible, people will feel apathy. People will feel apathy. People will feel apathy. That's not a research oriented statement. That's a statement of using emotions to guide your re reporting results. We see that time and time again, and that is the main reason the actual research reports and the actual research results are not making it into our news. An expansive study of climate tipping points, that expansive study, again, is the research article we're going to go in tomorrow, is likely to fuel that discussion. It synthesizes the most current evidence on how much warming would risk passing 16 tipping points. Polar ice collapses, permafrost thawing, monsoons, and forest and coral reef diebacks. These are some serious tipping points. Many of these systems are already stressed by rising temperatures, and the study finds the world might already be within the warming range where the risk is elevated. This is really minimizing to the point of misstating the truth. When it says these systems are already stressed by, temperature, by, by rising temperatures, the argument I had with my husband, or, or I was so stressed about being overworked all week, you know, I'm so stressed by the traffic. That's really a minimizing way to describe what we see in the first sentence, which says ice sheets are melting and stressed coral reefs means coral reefs are dying and global warming is changing our world unmistakably. But then down here, the sentence says these systems are already stressed 
and might already be within the warming range where the risk is elevated. So that's just a misstatement. The risk isn't elevated, the risk has happened. The risk has manifested. It also concludes that even under the most ambitious scenario for limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade, the planet could still see dramatic changes. And since we are already seeing dramatic changes at a lower temperature, this world, word could needs to be changed to the word will. The planet will see dramatic changes. Whew. Uh, pause me while I soothe myself with some warming tea and a kitty snuggle. An independent scientist not involved with the work is named Chris Jones. And Chris Jones says it's a timely and thorough piece of work. Chris Jones is a climate scientist at the Met Office Hadley Center. That's not a university, so I looked into that. The Met Office Hadley Center is in the UK. They're a climate research center. And they've been involved in 2,200 peer-reviewed articles. So, you know, not a university, but still sounds like a quality researcher. And, and the person who works there named Chris Jones uh, says that the findings are consistent with previous work, but updated and more detailed. So that's great. Timely and thorough. It's a piece of work that was well done. The findings are consistent with previous work. So that's great. It's showing um, consistency with other researchers. And updated in more detail. So that's all good news. He and other climate scientists warn against cataclysmic interpretations of the findings, which is, again, that's pressure to not take the truth of the research because it's going to cause apathy. A different outside independent scientist named Zeke Hausfather, who works at a technology firm called Stripe. Isn't that a technology firm that takes processes payments online? I'm not getting that, so let me look this up. Yeah, he works at Stripe. And Stripe is a company that hel helps increase the GDP of the internet. This is a company that takes processes credit card payments online. Okay. Now, you know, I have to break in here because I just, why would a credit card, I mean, I'm actually stuttering with shock. Okay. It's like, wow, I've made a great discovery that one of the people who was asked to consult on this climate change article works for a credit card processing company called Stripe. It's a company I I do business with because I used to own a pottery studio and sell pottery, and I would take credit cards at the farmer's market using Stripe software. In fact, I held a little bit of their stock, but it's going down, down, down. It's plummeting. If I recall correctly, Stripe is owned by Amazon. So why would a credit card processing company have a climate change research department? The last thing a credit card processing company wants to see is fewer online purchases, fewer consumption. You keep people spending on things and that's not good for the environment. So what I think is that the reason my stock purchase of Stripe went down and down and down until I finally sold it at a loss is because they're spending all their excess money on climate change for Amazon. Anyway, I don't even want to go into that too far because I'm more interested in the research, but that's pretty fishy, you have to admit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> back to your regular programming. Oh, I love you, sweet pea. Okay, so this person who works for a credit card processing com company is doing climate research there for some reason. I don't know why. And he says that the journal article indicates that a lot of really bad tipping points are still avoidable, which is another way of saying some really bad tipping points are not avoidable and have already, in fact, tipped. Okay. David Armstrong McKay is the lead author on the paper and the University of Exeter 
is in the UK and offers research and study in sciences, social sciences, business, humanities, etc. So the lead author of the paper is a professor at the University of Exeter. They gathered evidence from where? From ancient climate records, from modern observations. That's more data. Also, they compared it with models of how systems should work and current best estimates. So that would probably be a comparison with other research, peer-reviewed research. They looked at ecological data. That would be perhaps what's happening with the glaciers, what's happening with you know, the weather, what's happening with the ocean rise. Atmospheric systems, that would be perhaps the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and the increase in water vapor that the atmosphere holds because of warming and other systems. Then they estimate the minimum warming that might trigger a tipping point and the maximum warming that will trigger a catastrophic tipping point. If you take a system like the ice caps, what is the minimum warming where the ice caps might start melting? And what is the maximum warming where the ice caps will start melting. The authors also made a best estimate of where in the middle between those two extremes the actual tipping point might be, which really we are not going to know until we pass it, so we never want to get close to a tipping point. You really don't want to know what the tipping point is. What you want to know is what's the minimum place where a tipping point could happen and stay way far away from it. The people who wrote the research article, those scientists deform, define the current global warming at 1.1 degree centigrade. I think it's a really unfortunate to put a dash in front of it because it makes it look like minus 1.1 centigrade. It's almost a typographical pun, really. <laughs> I've just lost my <laughs> I've just lost my thoughts in the, in the typographical pun. <laughs> Why would they put this dash in front of 1.1 centigrade? It makes it look like it's global warming of minus 1.1 degree centigrade. It's really ironic. Anyway, okay, so Earth is already past um, the low end of the range for five tipping points, putting coral reefs, permafrost, and polar ice at risk. Okay, so that means coral reefs, their tipping point means they would start dying and keep dying. Permafrost, uh, the tipping point would be that it starts melting and keeps melting, uh, releasing trapped methane into the atmosphere. That's another global warming feedback loop. That means polar ice starts melting. When it starts melting, it's not reflecting sunlight, so that's another warming feedback loop. Just 0.8 degrees of centigrade of warming may have already accelerated the decline of the ice sheet. And as little as 1 degree centigrade of warming might have put the West Antarctic ice sheet on a path toward collapse. So what they're saying is, we might have already passed the tipping point because our low estimate says we could have already passed the tipping point on these things. And like I explained, you don't want to, you don't want to find out you've accidentally passed a tipping point. You want to stay away from the low estimates. So this is really bad news. Now, the author of this news report brings in a third scientist who wasn't involved in the research. Her name is Nyreli Abram of the Australian National University. And what she says after reading the article is, quote, once the ice sheet start to collapse and lose ice, it actually pushes itself into an even less stable configuration, driving sea level rise ar around the globe. So this outside researcher says, once the ice starts melting, it gets into a feedback loop. And we know the ice has already started melting. So it's clear that a feedback loop is, has started, and that means we have already crossed the tipping point for losing that ice. Regardless of that, <laughs> for both of these ice sheets, the authors of the research paper estimate that 1.5 degrees centigrade is the more likely tipping threshold and that the maximum we could possibly warm without reaching it is 3 degrees centigrade. And as I've already explained, since we've already passed the tipping point, there's no need for these numbers at all. Okay, so this paragraph invites reality into the conversation. The Paris Agreement had governments agreeing to hold global warming to 1.5 degrees centigrade to 2 degrees centigrade. 
And we already know that's a shifting target. It keeps moving upward because we keep not meeting the goals. And right here it says the 1.5 degree Paris target was a number of convenience produced by diplomatic maneuvering. Okay, so it's, it's laughable. But the lead author of the paper says that his study reinforces the perils of not meeting even this goal. And other researchers not involved in the paper agree. The paper synthesizes a huge amount of evidence and makes it easier for policymakers and others to see how societal choices could help avoid or not help avoid tipping points. So it's good research, she's saying. It's really good research, it's, and it's trying to make it easy for policymakers to see that social choices are essential to avoid tipping points. Now we're back to that tired emotional argument that shouldn't even be in a science research that says too great a focus on tipping points could feed arguments that nothing can be done to keep warming to safer levels, so let's just give up. In this case, it's a warning by someone named Bob Kopp who wants to police what is said in conclusions and research articles because of these emotional reasons. So I am getting a little tired here, but I took another moment to research Bob Kopp, who works at Rutgers University. And on his university website, one of the first things you notice is that he has written a book called Economic Risks of Climate Change. And then it says that um, this professor directs the Megalopolitan Coastal Transformation Hub, which is a development responds to climate change. It's, it's business as usual. This is the point of view of this professor that the most important thing is to protect the economy from climate change, whereas many scientists have the opposite viewpoint that the climate needs to be protected from the economy. Bob Kopp, this police of climate conversation, says, I worry about tip tipping points feeding this idea that there are tipping points and below the tipping point we're okay and above it we're not. So he is worried that reality is reality. Instead, he says, each increment of warming produces additional risk. Well, that's true. The authors of the research paper hope their work will instigate more concerted research on tipping points. They note that they have low confidence in many of their thresholds. Now, this drives me bananas. Researchers need grant money for more research to keep their labs open. So every research paper says at the end of it, we need to do more work. We need to study this further. You will never find a research paper that doesn't say more work is needed. That's how researchers get grant money and keep their families fed. Another climate scientist who wasn't involved in the research article named Thomas Stalker, who works at the University of Bern, he thinks comparison should wait for the next generation of climate models, which are expected to produce even more detailed results. But this is actually nonsensical. There is never a day on this planet when that statement isn't true. Always more research will produce more detailed results. But that argument doesn't mean that current research shouldn't be used as truth as we know it today. It should be used today to make cogent decisions on societal changes needed to avoid tipping points. We don't need to wait for more research. And thank goodness that's the end of the article. And there's Kathleen O'Grady who wrote it. I think it's interesting the person who wrote the news article is not a PhD scientist. Okay, my friends, I'm going to hopefully edit this down into something that you can understand. And that's all background for the exciting next step. Tomorrow, I'm going to take us through the actual science research, the primary research um, in this very highly respected <laughs> peer-reviewed journal called Science. 
and it's going to be exciting. So stick with me. Let me turn back on the camera. Okay, so at this point, I'm actually sitting in a darkened room going over this research result. So still not ready for prime time. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, don't worry, I'll get better at this video editing and you'll be glad you're along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Good night.